And a very good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Saturday Spiritual Talk evening. We've got a lovely lady for uh, us tonight, lovely Jules Yurti Gertie. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's what it says on your Facebook page, love. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how you're being introduced. Okay. Jules, we've, we've had a little chat uh, pre going on air tonight. And yeah, it, it, this is going to be very interesting and delivered with a lot of love and a lot of humour. Jules, very good evening to you. Good evening to you, Laurie. Nice to meet you. And thank you so much for giving up your time tonight to be with us and just share this short time. And during these evenings where we talk about different topics, it's fascinating to find other people's stories of how they got to where they are today. Um, how they work with their different practices and their understandings, because we get a lot of interaction with people viewing, uh, asking questions. And I would say to everybody watching tonight, if you have any questions during the course of the evening, please just pop them in the comments box. So Jules, how we were talking beforehand and you said you were a primary school teacher. Um, I'm a secondary school teacher secondary school teacher yeah. so how where was that shift then from being in the education system to start working with the esoteric arts um well um <laughs> can i just explain about the jules yurti gurti um, oh, go on, they, 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 uh, people take the mickey out of me because i've got yurts in the garden and that that's how that's come about and I wanted to change it and I got so many complaints saying, what are you doing? I had to change it back. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, to answer your question, um, basically I was diagnosed with epilepsy and had seizures, um, big, big seizures. And I wasn't coping with it on many levels, emotionally and psychologically, uh, because they would come at random. Um, and I felt out of control um, of what was happening to me. And someone suggested to me that what I should have is Reiki. So I went and had some Reiki. I chatted to my GP and he said, if it helps you, then um, yeah, great. So that's how I started. And uh, that's what happened. So I was having Reiki healing and then somehow or other i then started as you do meeting like-minded souls that do different modalities and and reiki is sort of my foundation stone really uh, my platform my basis from which all the other modalities spring from all right <clears throat> very interesting isn't it um many many people on the spiritual path either through these programs or meeting in person we arrived here at a time of trauma. We've arrived here at a time when everything suddenly was thrown up in the air and yeah. we didn't know what was going on. Similar actually to the COVID era and for the rest of the world, everything thrown up in the air. And But just to raise that consciousness, just to start thinking, um, because we did live very much in a society where we didn't have to think too much or we weren't encouraged to think too much. It was just a, a machine after a little while. And then suddenly when that machine grinds to a sudden halt, we're there and we're open and we start asking and saying, you know, oh, well, what's going on? So, and I really love that the, your uh, physician said, you know, if it works for you, go for it. We uh, are. Yeah, I, I, I find that, um, he, he, I'm still with him now, and he is extremely um, open about that sort of thing. And I suppose I've always questioned from a, um, a young age um, about religion, faith, um, and I've always been um, searching and, and a bit of a non-conformist, really. And for me, um, when I followed that, that route of Reiki, um as my starting point it's like i said to you laurie earlier on before we came um live is that um i had 
thought I would just do Reiki and nothing else. And then uh, it, Spirit has other ideas. Um, they um, backed me off into my channeling, my mediumship, the Go Bay Rainbow Ray, meditation, um, working with dragons and fairies and unicorns and and um, Lemurian light, all, all those things. And it's the same with, I mean, I wasn't very good at maths when I was at school and I'm laughing because I was rubbish. And I've suddenly, somehow or other, I've got into numerology. Why? I don't know. I haven't got a clue. Uh, and I find it fascinating. So like I said to you earlier on, the more th that you learn, the less the less you know. That's so that, true. That's what I find with me, the more I learn stuff. Um, not just by going on courses, but from people I meet, from people I teach in the yurts. Um, it, it just is magical. And I meet people, for me, um, it's all about divine timing. And I meet people when I need to meet them. And I think that happens the other way around. They meet me when they need to meet me. Indeed, yeah, I, I can stand testimony to that, and I'm sure a lot of people watching tonight will agree. Um, there is this awesome synchronicity at times, yes. and it just happens, it just unfolds, and it does throw a few people because, um, where the act of evidential mediumship is often done with the need for uh, recognition or confirmation. Our everyday mediumship doesn't require that. It just happens. Yeah. You know, you, you come yesterday, I was having yeah, a little bit of a wobble about something. And I thought, yeah. And a really good friend of mine just sent a message through saying, Hi, oh, I'm just thinking of you. You're right. So we had a really good talk. And I said, That's great. I love that. Absolutely love that. I mean, I was taught when I did my mediumship to switch it off. And I suppose as my. Um, as as you develop more of a relationship with for me the universal energy life force and like-minded souls that are on this earth plane because we're part of a community a collective um i don't tend to switch it off um but i do ask um my guides uh, my spiritual guides the angelic realm whoever because you do have a big family of people around you supporting you. Yeah. I do sometimes say to me, then can you leave me be for a bit and allow me to rest? Give give me the sense of peace so that I can wait refreshed uh, the following day or or have a rest period. And they do do that. They they do give me um, rest periods. Um, and and you you think well do do I really need that and when you begin to trust and go with the flow and I hate to use the cliche be in the moment yeah they do know when you need to have a rest period because they know what's coming up for you yeah. then they want they work with you it's a two-way uh, relationship with whoever you're working with and for me as long as you work with love and light and for the greatest good of yourself and the greatest of good of everybody else that you come into contact with, I don't think you can go far too wrong. You know, you, that's, that's just how it is. That's brilliant. Really like the fact that you acknowledge yourself as part of that, because quite often being giving people, you see people within all of these esoteric fields, giving, giving, yeah. giving, because that's in their nature, but not probably uh linking into that understanding that we all here on a journey this is about yeah. our soul's development all well I, I use the analogy of there there's me in this wonderful glowing jam jar my, all my essences all my dimensions all my being all my facets in this jam jar and i have to keep that space uh, sacred to me but I can give excess energy and I can receive it. Yeah. And I think that we, we have to look after self um, very much so because um, we're, we're not any good to anyone if we don't look after ourselves. And that's not being selfish. That is actually making sure that we're uh, totally 
um, in the moment, healing ourselves, um, building up our relationship with our higher self and with the modalities and um, the guides that we work with, whether they're ancestors, cosmic beings, the angelic realm, whatever form they take. Or like I say, I love working with the fairies and the dragons and the unicorns. And, and I think also is I, I'm, I'm not afraid to actually say, this is me, this is what I do. And uh, this is who I am. This is what I believe in. This is how I work. They work with me. And, and uh, spirit works with us. They take full advantage of our gifts, um, our every being and bring that out to the full. So I tend to, when I'm working with mediumship, um, people who know me that are coming on here, because I've got several people on here like Nikki, hiya, um, thank you for joining in. Um, they know that we work with a bit of sense of humour and, and when we laugh and when we enjoy things, it raises our vibrational energy. Um, and the, the, when we raise that vibrational energy, it makes us feel better. And if we feel better, people that we come into contact with feel better. Yeah, I'd, uh, <clears throat> I'd, I have a reputation apparently for being a bit of a funny man. But I, <laughs> tip, a, a, typical, <laughs> a typical male outlook on it is I always saying. Do you have saying, puppets, do you, Laurie? Do you have puppets? No, but I have, I have costumes. <laughs> <laughs> but I always say to people, you know, we weren't put here to be miserable. You know, we, we were, and some people treat their uh, understandings as sort of like a little bit of a heavy burden to be endured. Oh, and right. I just think, why? Yeah, <laughs> why, I, why? Yeah, I mean, I just think. Um, I, I mean, everyone has stories to tell, and, and, and I'm no exception. And um, I, I have some lovely uh, little uh, stories that um, just make me smile. Um, uh, when we went to St. Nectan's Glen, a friend of mine went to St. Nectan's Glen, and we were walking down the stream to that beautiful waterfall in, in uh, Devon, Cornwall. And um, I wasn't in the moment and listening, really listening to nature. And uh, she said to me, I can hear the fairies singing. And she looked at me and she said, just stand still, just stand in the moment, be with nature, ground yourself and really tune in. And you know, I could see them, but I didn't say anything to anyone, but I didn't hear them singing. I could hear them singing and um, they're amazing. So when I'm doing, um, oh, so if you get a light flash, I don't know if you saw that, Laurie, I've got a light oh. flash. That's, that's spirit giving me little signals. Oh, okay. Like light flash. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for that. And and because and, uh, they're all around me and if I get a bit distracted, it's because I am getting signals from, from spirit and the angelic realm and the fairies and all sorts that are coming in. So um, yeah, it's 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 just opening yourself up. And sometimes I see orbs and I see colors. And if I need some healing on my throat or my chakras, um, I just, sometimes I go in the yurt and I just say, look, I don't want to do hand positions. Let's just simplify. Let's just simplify it right down. And just give me the healing that I need for that moment in time and just enjoy it. And sometimes I don't even put music on. I just lay there with one candle or my fairy lights are usually up and I just allow it to happen around me. And mm -hmm. just be in the, some people might call that meditation. I think sometimes they overcomplicate things. And I think it's just about keeping it simple. What works for you, what, whatever level that might be. I agree wholeheartedly there. I think some of our practices have become a little bit robed in mysticism <laughs> and practice. And 
you know, when people say, oh, hold on, I'm just summoning my spirit. And I'm like, summoning? Ooh. I'm, I'm very love. <laughs> well, they're, summoning they're, 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 they're all around. It, but it's, for me, it's not, obviously, I have to use my head. Um, but for me, it's about it all coming from my heart space. Because your heart chakra is connected to your throat chakra. That sounds like that song. What's that song, you know, about the skeleton in it? Oh, yeah. Hip bones connected to your uh, left bone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, it's a song in a minute. And oh, you go you. into the third eye chakra and then your crown chakra and, and uh, your soul star. That connects you to divine loving light. But that heart chakra then connects you to your solar plexus and your sacral and your root chakra, which is your earth energies. And, and understanding, without getting it all too complicated, um, we, we are multifaceted, multidimensional human beings, and we have our frailties and our weaknesses, but by golly, do we have uh, such magic about us and such uh, sense of fun. It, even our hands and our, our bodies are just amazing and what they, what it does. It's just a case of opening up all our senses um, and allowing ourselves to receive unconditionally. Uh, that's that's what I, you know, that for me, that's my, one of my passions is uh, just opening it up. <clears throat> I think that's extremely sage advice. I really do. Um, as I say, sometimes you see. All oh, these... it wasn't meant to be advice, Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's just a passion of mine, you know. It's just a passion of mine that uh, I think that you just have to be the caretaker for self and higher self and yes. open up. Um, that doesn't mean to say that we have to sort of put up with stuff. Um, far from it, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not one to sort of say, well, we just because we follow a spiritual journey that, you know, we have to take any rubbish that's thrown at us or criticisms and whatever, but it's about standing in our power, in our in our higher selves, knowing yeah. who we are, understanding who we are, and accepting every aspect of ourselves. But I think the key is just to actually love ourselves. I'm going to give myself a bit of a hug now. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, apologies for putting that out as an advice thing because obviously to open yourselves up everybody listening to any energy requires this understanding yourself before yeah you. but yeah when you are and i know there's quite a few healers in the room tonight will okay. understand that completely of just yeah. allowing that moment to happen and the awesomeness of it absolutely mm. beautiful you mentioned something a little bit earlier on. I'm not familiar with the Mirian Ray. Uh, Lemurian, Mi Lemurian. Oh, Lemurian. Uh, Beg your pardon. Lemurian um, uh, Reiki uh, and Atlantean Reiki. Um, there, um, I'm, I'm sure that pe people out there are aware of it. It's like the Golden Ray, Rainbow Ray, color therapy. It's it's different modalities. Um, uh, it's it's a bit like you know in ancient times mythology um, that we all come from Lemuria, um, and it's it's working with different energies. The source is the same. You can't you can't escape that. It's just that there are different modalities out there, and uh, it's a case of actually working what. Uh, what what suits you and I just have got involved with after doing my Reiki um, and I obviously I teach Reiki looking at Lemurian light and the Reiki of the Atlanteans um, I'm, a, I'm a bit uh, and it's quite fascinating uh, looking into that side of things and I'm sure there are many healers as you said on uh, listening in um, and some people do color therapy for example, in my situation, I, I can count on one hand how many times I have seen chakras, and yet uh, friends of mine see them. Um, I feel them, but I don't actually 
necessarily see them all the time. But I don't worry about that because I think, well, maybe that's not part of what spirit want me to do. Um, uh, and we are part of a collective. Um, and some people work with chakras, they work with color. Some people uh, are, are shamanic. Mm -hmm. uh, some people work with Native American Indian guides. Some people work with cosmic beings. Um, but when you bring all that together, if you imagine a massive, great big jigsaw puzzle, you know, we're a little tiny jigsaw piece in a big jigsaw puzzle. And if we come together, the power and the strength and the level of understanding, that's when it becomes magical and amazing. Beautifully put, beautifully put. And it's been quite a topic uh, of conversation over the last nearly two years now of being online like this about ancestors and recognizing our heritage, our cultural heritages, and yeah. especially with the um, shamanic people that we've had on talk. And I know you uh, have your sh Shima healing page. Yeah, my Shima holistic therapist. That, that, see that, I, 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 I knew I wanted to have a, an holistic center of some kind, um, and it was gonna be one year. I've now got two years, and I didn't know what to call it. And I was um, doing my Reiki uh, masters, Reiki master teachers, and the lady who I uh, who taught me my Reiki master, she um, said, "I've got this large dog sitting on my stomach while I was giving her some healing, because she obviously wanted to, me to understand what I was doing." And I said, oh, yeah, I keep seeing this large dog. This large dog comes in. And she said, I'm being given the name. And I said, quick, write it down, because I'm, I'm a little bit dyslexic. So I said, write it down, because I said, I'll forget. Um, anyway, it's Shima. And I've never heard of that word. So I looked it up when I got home. And it means energy from love. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Hindi. It's a Hin I think it's a Hindi word meaning energy from love and that and someone said to me why aren't you calling it shima holistic therapist and that's how that's basically come about so i have this gorgeous amazing um guide called shima and uh she is an alsatian or german shepherd dog and she comes in and when i'm doing the healing or i need protection or I need support and guidance, um, I can feel her come into my energy field and she definitely protects me, but she also gives me that love and devotion that dogs get, yeah. you know, that's what, what they do. So that's how that, that's come about. And uh, I'm not a pink person, I'm a purple person. You can't see that, Laurie, on the screen, but I'm into purple. But the sunsets where, where I am in Gloucestershire, um, one, the larger year, we get a beautiful sunset, and I kept getting pinks and purples, and I'm not a pink person. <laughs> yeah. But um, for whatever reason, the two colours that stand out for me for shimalistic therapies is pink and purple. Wonderful. So I'm just totally, you know, I'm guided on on different levels with uh, with different things and. I'm sure those guys that are tuning in and, and listening to us, it, I'm sure it will resonate with them because you don't just have one guide, you have many guides and they come in many forms yeah. and many sizes and they'll come in for different purposes, but they're, they're all there and one will come in to assist you with whatever um, we are doing at that time, whether it's mediumship, channeling, or, or healing. I, I'm a bit reluctant to sort of say I'm a Reiki healer, teacher, because there are so many modalities out there. Spirit, tell me what I need to use for a particular on a particular person when a, when a client comes to me. And sometimes that is working with Native American Indians, which I have done. It's about being protecting yourself. And uh, I think that's so important. Uh, protecting yourself 
and allowing spirit to protect you, but at the same time, which sounds like a contradiction in terms, being open to receive. Yeah. I think I've got a, I've got a question, Maria. You it's have indeed, asking. from the lovely Sue Townsend. Yeah. So, Jules, um, Jules, do you feel unicorns and dragons have drawn much closer in recent years, and how do they work with you? Oh, that, Sue, that's a that's a, a lovely question. I think you're absolutely right. I feel that um, unicorns and dragons are coming more and more to the forefront, and some people may feel that they're uh, that they're ancient myth. For me, um, the unicorns um, are drawing much closer, um, and everyone has. Um, a personal unicorn um, that that comes to them, that works with them, and there are, there are. Uh, I was once told, which I think is beautiful, is that horses are are very emotional. They're very empathic. Uh, that's why they're used a lot for therapy. And I was once told that when a horse reaches its final journey, it returns to spirit as a unicorn, and um, it's about having a real connection um, with the unicorns or the one particular unicorn that you work with. And for me, um, there are symbols that I use to call in the unicorns. Um, in the case of the dragons, um, I will use my dragons in conjunction with the fairies. So if I need to take away um, pleasant energy forms, um, which need to be transformed. It's so important that if you're taking something a little bit unpleasant away, that you replace it with love and light. So I find that my unicorns or my fairies put the lovely energy back in, but my dragons take it away. And what I was taught that when you take that stuff away, it needs to be transformed. So I usually, what I do is I just ask my dragons to come in take it away on their wing, because some of them are really big. Some of them are little wee ones. I've got a little wee yellow one, um, but I've got a very big purple one. And they, they fly off, they incinerate, and then they transform it. Now, for me, the transformation for me takes the form of um, a hummingbird, because I like hummingbirds, or um, a phoenix. So you're absolutely right, Sue. For me, unicorns and dragons are very much um, being in this day and age of enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment, are coming more and more to the forefront because the dragons are also about enlightenment, as other things are. But um, yeah, they, they are definitely um, coming more and more to the forefront. And dragons can be used for cleansing and healing, uh, detoxing, removal, um, and they, they can be very tiny or they can be quite large, but they also have a wonderful, and they come in different colours, and the different colours mean different things. And it's the same for unicorns. They come in different colours. Um, their manes are different colours. Um, I was told that the horn, and somebody may correct me if I'm wrong, so forgive me, I was told that the horn is is what connects them to spirit. But I'm sure there's somebody out there that will correct me if I'm wrong, but um, magical, they are magical to work with. Wonderful. I, I must admit, I was a little bit ambivalent uh, about this field of the spirituality until about 10 months ago. Um, we, I was in conversation with two people who are very well respected and very to me sensible and out there and they were telling me about a time when they both walked into the woods and had conversations with fairies and i was like yeah that's really interesting actually because i've, I've never experienced it so i i don't understand it but when you have people like that saying yeah we've been in the woods and we sat there and we spoke to the fairies and i was like mm -hmm. okay okay fair enough they usually come uh, they don't. They don't like um, domestic dogs, domestic animals around. I've been told. Uh, we've got a wood not far from us, and fairies here. They appear 
just at the point of sunrise when the dew is nestling on the grass and it sparkles. Um, they can appear as orbs. When you meditate or you do self-healing, they come in. And sometimes when I'm doing, um, and I'm going to say healing in its loosest sense, sometimes when I'm doing that, you, sometimes people bring in the fairies. Um, and, and, and it doesn't matter whether they're male, female, or whatever it is. And you think, wow, they brought these fairies in because these fairies are magical. And they're, but some of them are very playful. Um, they tumble and they're different colours again. Interesting, interesting. Julie Caswell up in London. Uh, Julie, no question is silly if you don't know the answer. I always <laughs> say that. Yes. So Julie's asking, with your Alsatian dog guide, do you think he has had a life on Earth? Well, Julie, that that is fascinating. Um, and I would say 100% yes. And the reason why I say that is because when I was, um, I'm not very tall actually myself now, but when I was a small child, um, I find it interesting that I've been given an Alsatian as a guide. But when I was a small child, I used to have, when I used to go to primary school, I had to walk through this little alleyway to take a shortcut to get to the primary school. And there was this really vicious Alsatian dog that used to jump at the fence at me and it would petrify me to the point where I would wish that the dog was never there. Um, and funny enough, um, my spirit guide, Shima, is exactly the same color as that dog um, and later on in life before I even knew I had Shima as one of my um, spirit guides I'm sure you Judy that you may have have this connection sometimes you get a child or a or, or a, a horse or a dog or a, that will actually look at you in a certain way and you think you've got that connection. Um, and before I knew, even knew I had um, Shima as my guide, I seemed to have this connection with Alsatian dogs, which worried me a little bit because of my experience as a child. And I've learned to sort of um, actually get over that uh, fear. And I also think that maybe Spirit has given me um, a dog as one of my guides because when I was a child, I was frightened of dogs. I actually got attacked by a dog. And, and, and <laughs> I'm convinced that Spirit has given me Shima, uh, which means energy from love, um, to allow me to get over that uh, experience. But yeah, Julia, I, I, I took I, that Shima is definitely been on earth how yeah. interesting as re that is actually very fascinating mm -hmm. um and it makes perfect sense as well uh, the one thing we tend to forget or neglect when we work with spirit is they it's the intelligence that's yes. there. you know um and when we sort of like find evidence of that intelligence displayed we go oh actually yeah that makes sense well they have a great sense of humor um, yeah. they, 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 they also challenge us and they make us think outside the box. I'm sorry, I hate that cliche. Um, but they have a great sense of humour, but they also have this magical way of leading us in a direction that we perhaps don't realise we're going in. And uh, they're full of surprises, totally full of surprises. Yeah. And, 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 that's why it's so important for me um, to be around like-minded souls and to feel part of a, a a collective, a connection. And yeah, there's going to be people that you know we find difficult because we're vibrating at different energy frequencies, uh, and that that's just the beauty of being human beings. But uh, it's for me, it's very important to be part of a collective and. When I'm teaching uh, a modality in the yurt, I always learn from the people that come to receive from me. Um, I had a, 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 I always loved this, this, this experience I had, 
was I was in the big years and I was I, I sometimes like to do a one to one. I don't like big teaching in big groups. And we uh, I was teaching um, Reiki level one and she finally went on to Reiki practitioner. And I was paddling my feet in the, in the yurt and I was picking up from spirit that this lady had a beautiful wonder, wonderful water energy and a mermaid energy. And I was paddling my feet and she didn't want to say anything to me and I didn't want to say anything to her. So for about half an hour and suddenly the, the yurt was beginning to fill up with water, spiritual water. Yeah. And she then plucked up enough courage and she said to me, Jewel, she said, you do know you've been paddling for the last half an hour. And I said, oh, I said, I didn't really want to say anything. And she said, well, I, I, neither did I. But she said, um, she said, I'm very connected, not just to fairies, but to mermaid energy. So we spent about an hour having a really good giggle about it. And when we finished the course together, because it's always about learning together, the water just went like that and subsided and she could feel it and so could I because water is about cleansing it's about healing it's about detoxing it's about rejuvenation it's it's just it was it was a magical experience and I will she will never forget that and I will never forget that so I actually learn um learn alongside the people that come to me to learn about different modalities and that's what's so exciting and that is what is so important that you know we are just because we're a reiki grandmaster or we're blah 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 or we got this label it doesn't make us better than anyone else we just have yeah. a different set of experiences very true very true that that is a lovely wonderful story there yes. water experience as well I find uh, when I first started running circles, uh, I, I do tend to over plan things a little bit. <laughs> but what I hadn't factored in was um, my expansion of understanding and learning from those people that came into the uh, circle. And that yeah. just happened from day one. I thought, oh, this is really interesting. I do love this. As we're working together as a whole to grow, I am included in that energy. Um, yeah, brilliant. It's, it's like we, we do um, we do the drumming circles in the earth, which are lovely. Um, and sometimes we sit outside, get the wood burner going, and we have um, a lady that comes to the yurt, and she's very shamanic and she's very knowledgeable, and and I I'm like a sponge when I'm around her. And she and she said once at the circle, she said she doesn't like to talk about the connection she's had with her guides because she said she feels it severs the cord. And I that taught me so much because I now always say to people, if you do not want to share your experience in the whole or in part, that's fine. Because at the end of the day, if you want to just absorb the love and the light that you get from your guides and your ancestors, that's worth its weight in gold. And it's a relationship that you have. Um, and, and you have to respect that. So we don't always share. Some people will say, pass, I'm, I'm not prepared to share that. Some people will share a little snippet. And, and that's fine because sometimes you have to get used to the silence yeah. because that's when you receive the communication from energy life source from source very true and a lot of these experiences can be intensely personal and you, you know that they are solely for you they are for all yeah. you to take and to learn and grow or adapt to and without you know, you're not being rude it's nobody else's business because that's yeah. something that's just been given to me and it's something that i need to work with and that's i mean i went to, uh, sorry Molly, i right. went to church uh, it was midnight mass to a little time i call it the vicar of dibley the vicar of dibley church because it was a bit like that and there was this lady she was amazing and she was doing a reading 
And I was sitting there with a friend of mine, and there was sadly there weren't very many people in the church, but hey ho, that's that's how it is. And there was this massive angel behind her, absolutely glorious. I could see the wings, everything. It was just incredible. And what I wanted to do with so much excitement, I wanted to rush up to say, "Come, you've got this, you've got this angel." Anyway, I didn't say anything. I just kept very quiet, and I just sort of said to spirit if i meant to tell her give me the opportunity to do it yeah because it's not my right to do that it's not my place to do that anyway i never ever said anything to her but this angel because she did her reading and then buried at the altar and as soon as she buried it, this lovely golden angel was burned, and then followed her back to her seat and i i, I just thought wow but I didn't say anything and I've never been given the opportunity to say anything. But then on the other hand, who am I? You yeah. know, it's not about me. It's she probably knows she's got that gorgeous angel around her. You know, she doesn't need me to tell her. Yeah. yeah. But it's what a wonderful thing to sorry, I'm a bit passionate, aren't I? About no, no, don't apologize. We love the passion oh. because it comes over really well. That and you you said something there which i always say if i have made privy to something uh not of my own experience i always say give me the opportunity to share if not that's fine yes. it's about 50 50 you know it's just, yeah they may come up and start a conversation with you or they may not and that's absolutely fine because not everything we do needs validation all the time no absolutely just the, not it's about, you know, as long as we've got that, that's fine. I think, is there a question from Sue Brown, or have I answered that one? There is, no. <clears throat> so Susan's asking, there is a saying that we teach that which we need to learn most. Would you agree? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, Sue, so much so. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm laughing like mad because whatever I'm doing and wherever I am, um, yeah, it's like mediumship evenings that I do in the in the year with uh, Glenn. Um, you can always guarantee there's a, an amazing person in there or lots of amazing people in there that already do mediumship. And I was saying to Laurie earlier on that I do get heckled. I do, <laughs> and they do help me out if I get stuck. Um, but that's that's the beauty of it is that uh, you're constantly learning. And you're not just learning from source, the divine loving light and, and your guides. You're learning from people that you you encounter. I mean, um, we, we've got a small little B&B here. And we had a lady from the States um, stay with us. And she was very quiet and very modest. And it wasn't until I was serving her breakfast in the morning, I realized through very modest conversation what an amazing person she was and yeah and that that's taught me sometimes you just have to sort of listen and even in mediumship or whatever i'm doing i have to listen not just to my guides but the people that are there because you do you learn yeah you're absolutely you're absolutely right we teach uh, that which we need to learn the most. Totally, totally get that yeah. on every level. <clears throat> Sue Towns. We have a lot of Sues here, by the way. Okay. <laughs> well, hi to all the Sues. <laughs> well, Sue Towns is asking, during healing, do you experience cosmic beings such as pal Palladians, etc.? Mm -hmm. If so, do you feel that working will there with their particular energy shall be more prevalent in the future of healing including higher sound frequencies yeah sue i i, I yeah i i know exactly what you you're talking about um it started it, it worried me to start with um but when i was doing some healing in in the smaller year i've got um i got um some cosmic beings coming in and they were working in pairs in binary and um i was saying to them and they were they they were doing the healing uh along with 
my other spiritual guides and um i could hear a different set of light language and sometimes i say to them can you translate for me if you need me to impart information that is relevant to the client then please give me the information so i can understand it and sometimes they would do that and sometimes i just have to trust yeah i i've looked quite a lot into uh, palladians and other cosmic beings um and it, it's part of uh if somebody said to me years ago would i be doing that i'd be going no way but i'm a bit of a trekkie i love star trek um so i'm not surprised that um cosmic beings come in and i find as well what i'm doing is sometimes and i'm sure there's quite a lot of people on here will use light language and um sometimes it happens and i don't know always what i'm saying um but i seem to understand it sometimes i say it in my heart chakra if i'm if if it's comfortable and i've got a certain client with me it will come out um out loud so yeah i took sue you're absolutely right for me cosmic beings will be uh, they're already in here and they're already working with us um they might be in uh, another dimension um but all we need to do is connect and um acknowledge uh and understand um how they communicate with us but i think in the in the not too distant future they are definitely going to play a big role in in what we do and i think what they've done is been very subtle and people may disagree with me that are on here but things like star trek and even down to sort of like Walt Disney and the films they have very subtle ways of showing us new technologies or uh, teaching us if we care to acknowledge it but so i think you're absolutely right i think that um, they're going to come in on a different set of language um and i think they're going to use different sets of sound as well to in order to um communicate uh with us and some of it might seem a bit strange i i got a friend of mine who does tuning works with tuning forks and singing bowls and what she creates there is just pure magic so yeah i think that that is something that's very much going to be coming in if it's not already here and i believe it's already here yeah <clears throat> I had my um eyes opened up over the last period of time with all this going on that actually yeah, obviously we've all had a lot of time to sit around thinking about things yes and, and I'm thinking do you know what we've always uh gone along this tenant that there is this world and the spirit world and that's it but when you actually start accepting that the spirit world is another dimension Yeah. So that means we are another dimension. And then the fact that there are two dimensions existing must mean that there are more dimensions. Existing. Yes, there are many many dimensions. A little bit like the edge of a book where you see all the pages where the book's closed and all the pages are piled up. I I saw that and I'm like what are you showing me and I thought that is really interesting actually. This is trying to get this idea of so many different dimensions. Yeah. And like all things, it's yeah, it's very very easy to poo poo things. Um but without proper investigation and debate, then really we should just hold back a bit. You know, if we've not experienced it, that's fine. Uh it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So No, oh, and I think I think as well is the fact that you know that there there the people are receiving symbols uh and, and when i'm teaching um the reiki in particular or golden ray and rainbow ray um it, i i i've got now that if spirit because spirit tell me what to teach they guide me on what that person needs to understand and what they need to go away and think about and i always say to them i i don't know how spirit are going to take you if reiki is your foundation your platform to leap from fine so be it but that person might go into channeling mediumship 
they might go into shamanism, they might go into all crystals, they might go into all sorts of things. Um, but I, I've got now that I trust spirit totally. And, and I make sure that I'm grounded and I'm protected and they're grounded and protected. And I say, if you get a symbol and you feel compelled to use that symbol in a healing, use it because it's there for a purpose. And, um, I, I, and I use the analogy that I remember I was doing a meditation with a group of people and an angel came in and she had this book and she was beautiful angel she was white and gorgeous and stunning um a bit like me on a good day um so <laughs> <laughs> and, and she checked this book and i said my higher self said who, who, what's the book and she said the book is for you you know i didn't like to share this because you know that that relationship i had with that angel was between me and that angel and somebody else in the room said to me, you've been with an angel and they've got a book for you. And even months went by, months went by. And I, and I even forgot about this book. And I went into um, a charity shop. Not that I wanted anything from the charity shop. I went in with a, a friend of mine. And on this bookshelf, on the left-hand side, was a book. And I walked past it. And Spirit said to me, what are you doing, Jules? Why are you walking past that book? That's for you. It's been there months. I thought, you know, it, I, even I look around sometimes. I think, is somebody coming behind me? And then, <laughs> is somebody coming for that dog? Anyway, they, they, so I went back and I picked this book up. And it said, a book of spells, white magic. And then I had a light bulb moment. Because when I had that meditation in Oxfordshire, it was, this angel told me that I would be given a book of spells. Anyway, I went to the desk and she said, that book has been on that shelf. There was no other book on this shelf. This was the only book on there. She said, that book has been on that shelf for about a month or more and nobody looks at it. I said, well, clearly I meant to buy it. Anyway, it was three pounds, the power of the three. Yeah. And when I opened it up, it's I've got it now. It's it, the herbs and the smells that came from it was magical, and it's 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 amazing book. So Brilliant. that's that's what I. That you never know when you get a message. You never know when you think, well, right, okay, that that'll come in handy, and it, it happens with me with music. It happens with me with things I need to say. It, it just happens all the time. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? I get that yes. um, fairly regularly with books. I will send, we've got a wonderful library here at the church. And I stood there one day and just one book just leapt out. It was That was the only book there out of hundreds of books. That was the one. Yeah. And I started reading it and it was so... And it was written in 1876. But it was talking about the world today and from... Uh, transcript direct from spirit and it was just awesome and it was yeah. a real step up for me to find that book well find it be presented with that book brilliant of it <clears throat> susan's just saying there i love that we are shown that which we need to learn in perfect timing yes yeah um yeah, yeah absolutely because it is all about divine timing and so I was once told, they said to me, Jules, if you keep on trying to grab it, it will move further away from you. And, and I think that is true. So what I try and do is I try and be in the moment and, and think, OK, it's about it's about divine timing. Um, and that that's hard, you know, because human beings were so used to sort of trying to grab hold of things and yeah. um, and have it in the here and now. Um, and it, that's that's a that's a toughie to sort of say. Actually, it, it it's a balance, you know. It's it's about not sitting back and and thinking it will come to me when it needs to be. I I I'm very much a believer that I have to work with source. I have to work with my guides because they work with me. And and that came about because when I 
was doing, of course, somebody said to me, Jules, your guides are coming in. In this case, it was the fairies. The fairies are coming in and they're coming in and they want to work with you. But you've got your hands behind your back and you're not welcoming them into your into your energy field. You're not talking to them. So I thought, oh, okay. And I kept doing this and they kept messaging me and saying, you're not talking to them. So I thought, they want me to talk to them? I'm going to talk to them. So when I was driving back, which was about a two hour, three hour journey, I thought, spirit want me to talk to them? I'm going to talk to them. And I talked to them constantly to the point they probably had hearing. <laughs> and then when I met up with them again, they said, you have been talking and listening to spirit. And I said, yes, I have. And that that's, that's what is just so important. It's about having a relationship about absolutely everything. So when I'm fearful, when I'm unsure of myself, when I'm struggling, when I'm, you know, yeah, I, I will walk the dogs and I will have a good old natter to them and say, look, come on, pull me up. And sometimes I'll put my hands in the air and say, just pull me up into the light and allow me to rest in the light until I've got the courage and the strength to go forward again. And, and I don't think that's got anything to do with religion or, or anything of that sort. I think it's just about having that personal relationship with your guides, with your source, um, whatever you perceive it to be. Um, and I think that's, that's the magic. That's where the magic happens. Definitely. Julie Caswell here just pointing out just over a hundred years ago, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle with the Cottingley Fairies was looking at the possibility that fairies were on a different vibration di dimension. So, yes, you tend to forget Arthur Conan Doyle did have this um, part and passage of working with the fairies. And the, would it be fair to call fairies and the such elementals, or are we talking two different energies here? Well, to be quite honest with you, I think there's different there's different energies, and I call them elementals. Um, but for example, take uh, me. I I discovered that um, besides angels and fairies and unicorns and dragons. I have um, a one, I've got to be careful because he is with me. He's on this side of me. Um, I've got a lovely chap called um, Mr. Troll. I call him Mr. Troll out of respect. I do know his uh, Christian name or his first name, sorry, I should say, because he doesn't like me putting that. Uh, but I'm not allowed to disclose it because it's top secret. Um, I thought he was sort of uh, Nordic uh, because he's a troll. But I've actually discovered that um, he's from Ireland. Now, um, I, I work with Mr. Troll. He's a great protector uh, for me. He's got a staff with a clear quartz crystal. I'm sure he won't mind. He'll tell me when I'm not allowed to um, say anything about it. Uh, yeah. And uh, he, he susses people out. And if he's not sure about them, he'll give them a bit of a bonk <laughs> he gives them a shove with his stuff um when i had little ponies i had shetland ponies he used to he used to wind the ponies up and i used to say you can't go around poking the ponies with your stick leave them be um but now i've got the yurts he used to sleep in um he used to be in my garden shed but i'm pleased to say mr troll they're all going to think i'm mad now laurie aren't they no, they're no. going to think i'm crazy I I think it's endearing. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Mr. Troll is now now uh, he's now safe in the uh, in the yurt. He, he likes being in the yurt, and if he chooses to be in my potting shed, then that's cool too. Um, but I he's an he's an amazing um, person. Um, I've got to be careful about what I say about him because um, he's got his he's got his hand on my leg now. Um, and when he wants me to stop, he, he taps me on the leg. So I'm not going to say anything more about it. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Troll. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a lazy guy. And we, we do have um, such a variety of uh, 
guides that come in and help us with all sorts of stuff. Yeah. In fact, I have done a healing and he disappeared with the fairies to London for on a distance healing. And she phoned me up and she, she didn't know I had Mr. Troll because I didn't tell her about him. And she said, I've got, she described him because she said, this is what I saw. And I said, oh yeah, I said, that's Mr. Troll. And she said, will he get back okay? And I said, oh yeah, yeah, he'll be fine. He'll come back to the fairies. He's, he's just keeping an eye on the fairies because she needed some fairy healing. And I said, he'll be fine. He'll come back. He'll come back when he's ready and uh, soon back. However, he travels around. He probably astral travels, I think. That's what he does. So, yeah, he's great fun. He's Brilliant. He's good after me and keeps me in check. Is it because all these elemental types, the fairies, the troll, all of these, mm. they are just embedded in our heritage, aren't they? Going back yeah. for thousands of years. Um, one thing I've read and I found it totally fascinating was gargoyles who adorn many churches <clears throat> yeah. throughout history and across the planet there were drawings of gargoyles now we are going back to the time when these countries never met each other there was no trade there was no travel between the two so how in that whole human consciousness that neural net around the planet that that particular figure was suddenly embedded right the way around the world and I just think, I don't know the answers, um, but the evidence supports there's something there. Absolutely. I love the troll. I absolutely <laughs> love the troll. Can oh, yeah. He's saying thank you. He's, he sometimes wears a hat. He's very, he's very smart. He's in, he's in town and country uh, gear tonight because he, he knows he's, um, he's saying to me because he's on telly. So, he's sort of smart. He's got a feather. He's got a feather in his hat. He's lovely. He's lovely. He looks after me. Keeps him. Keeps him. And he will come between me and somebody else if he thinks they're not good energy. Brilliant. Well, yeah. thank you, Mr. Troll. He's for... chap. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I spoke over you, so it wasn't heard. So apologies for that. <laughs> Uh, one final question here from Christina out in Stockholm. Okay. Do fairies take care of flowers, trees, and everything in nature? Oh, yes, they do. Um, obviously, Mother Earth is, you know, you can't, we can't, uh, we like to think human, human beings can battle against nature, but no, we can't. But fairies do look after in my opinion anyway look after the flowers and the trees and everything in nature but there are other modalities there are other um, beings that do do perform the same job as well um and, and they they do protect it i know i mentioned saint nectin's glen um which is a stunning waterfall um and there are other sites like that and the dragons the fairies do protect uh, that uh, those areas, um, and they do look after the flowers and the trees. I remember um, I need, I was on a shamanic. I had a shamanic healing, and uh, I was having a, a personal soul retrieval from a shamanic healer um, from a lady in the forest, and um, I had to bury some dark crystals to um, give myself a past life healing to a sacred tree that I had when I was a child. And the sacred tree um, was, a, believe it or not, a, a walnut tree, an English walnut tree, and it's still there now. So off I went with my crystals and there was a nail in the tree and I, I couldn't pull it out. So I just asked the fairies to help me get this rusty nail out because it, it just wasn't right. And it came out really easy. And I put it in my pocket and brought it home. And I put my hand on the tree and asked the fairies to send in their golden dust to heal the wound of the tree. And I buried my crystals 
and grounded and protected. And it was a beautiful sunny day. There was there was no wind, a beautiful sunny day. And I had to communicate to make sure that the job was done. And the lady, the shamanic healer said to me, you need to ask the tree, has the job been done? And I leaned against the tree and I just said, please give me a sign to tell me that my past life healing has been done. And I'm not kidding, this is honest truth, seriously. The branches of this walnut came down across me like that, as in a, like a, a bag, and then went like that. And I put my hands in the namaste position. And I just paid homage to that tree. So, um, Christina, for me, the fairies do take care of the the flowers, the trees, everything. You only have to look out and see a tree that's been severed or cut, and it will re-sprout. Yeah. You look at cities and towns and countries where man has built stuff up. Before too long, nature takes over. And that's the magic of nature. But yes, for me, the fairies are there. Definitely. Brilliant. Jules, what a magical evening. Oh, uh, bless you. Absolutely. It's just been a sheer joy being in your energy here tonight. Oh, it really you. has. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'd just like to thank everybody for... I have seen their comments um, and um, I have registered their names. So, I, Laurie, I would just like to thank all those people that have come on tonight and uh, listen to me rabbit on about my passion um my passions um because uh they're very real to me and uh thank you for asking me laura to um, take part tonight i really appreciate it and, uh, absolute pleasure uh, you well in all you do and all those lovely people that are listening in thank you to you for asking questions and um i wish you good health from mr troll the fairies the unicorns and the dragons and all the angels and Peace be with you and uh, look after yourselves. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Jules, an absolute delight. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, everybody watching tonight, thank you again. Nicola, yeah, I knew you'd love that, actually. Uh, there's definitely a link there. Anyway, I have put in the comments there a couple of links to Jules' website and also to her bed and breakfast page where the details of any retreats are on theirs as we can start traveling a little bit more now you never know there may be a little treat there for you next saturday at seven o'clock we have a lyceum evening so the topic will be solely spiritualism and we have the wonderful frederick hagland from sweden who will be our guest talking to us Everybody have a wonderful evening. Uh, if you go back and re-watch parts of this, there's some real absolute little gems in there. So thank you. Jules, any closing words? Yes, love and light to everybody. Can't do better than that. No. Good. 